Make sure you keep watching because we're going to talk about something that could very well be the destruction of America, as well as what is the only thing that can save us. If I played this footage of illegal immigrants in New York City beating and attacking police officers, this video would be taken down, which is exactly what happened to another YouTuber's video. The role of the government is to restrain evil. New video is sparking even more outrage over the group of migrants accused of attacking two New York City police officers. That's what you're looking at on the left hand of your screen. And when it functions to restrain evil, it is fulfilling its God-ordained purpose. After this horrific attack of these police officers, the migrants were freed without bail. And in response, one of them gave the middle finger to the reporters, another one blew kisses at them while showing absolutely no remorse, and the person next to him also gave the middle finger. Those guys were freed without bail. Here's one suspect flipping the bird to the cameras. Another blows kisses as he smiles and laughs. The other suspect next to him also putting up the middle fingers and cursing at those reporters. Remorse brazen, smug. The problem is when government ceases to function by God's design, it yields up its authority. Our government today has decided to not only reward evil by allowing violent criminals to go free, but also to punish good by jailing Christians who protest against the blatant evil in the culture. Six pro-life activists now face 11 years in jail for protesting against the evil of ending preborn life. The FACE, or Freedom of Access to Clinic Entrances Act, makes it illegal to block access to abortion clinics. The protesters each face up to 11 years in jail, three years of supervised release, and a fine of up to $260,000. But they're being unjustly, I believe, unjustly held yeah. 11 years in prison is insanity. Yeah. Um, it's a misdemeanor if that if that um for what do you for for the the FACE Act, have you? No, 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 no. Oh, you haven't heard this? No. So the FBI has rounded up 12, 11 or 12 people now. One of them is like an 84-year-old grandmother who was praying at the entrance of an abortion clinic. Uh, at the time, the abortion clinic came and told them they had to go. Some of them were hit with a misdemeanor for trespassing, I think, and it was over. Two years ago, the DOJ has started opening up cases now of those misdemeanors that were just misdemeanor and dismissed. And they are now charging them with a face act, which is blocking the entrance. And they are facing 11 years. Wow. Our government is completely wow. out of control. Wow, 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 wow. Well, you know, we have a recourse. Right. We have a recourse, you know. Right. At, so at, at, the, at the ballot box. Local police determined that the offense of the pro-life activists was relatively minor and they were let go with misdemeanor offenses. But the Department of Justice seems to want to make an example out of them and so decided to deploy an inordinate number of FBI agents to intimidate and arrest these pro-lifers. Here's a shot shocking video of the wife of one of these pro-life activists and her interaction with numerous FBI agents who showed up at her house. But if you're not going to let me, then I'll just... No, I want to know why you were banging on my door with a gun. Are you not going to tell me anything? No, do not. You, I, I, I tried. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. You did not try. This is not acceptable. Can I have your name? You're not going to give me your name. You're not going to give me any information. How is it possible to live in a society where illegal immigrants who violently attack police officers are allowed to go free while at the same time giving the middle finger to the people around them, while Christians who are engaged in a nonviolent protest are sentenced to 11 years in jail? This sounds absolutely insane, but let's remember that the Apostle Paul himself was put in prison by the government for preaching the gospel to a culture that hated the things he said. The man who wrote that, the Apostle Paul, was in violation of the government more often than any other person in the entire New Testament. And when he went to preach the gospel, he was very often thrown in jail, and ultimately he was executed by the government that he refused to obey when it no longer functioned 
to protect good behavior and punish evil behavior. Our government's evil goes far further than what we've seen so far. The Biden administration is currently actively incentivizing illegal immigration, which has resulted in an unprecedented number of illegal immigrants crossing the southern border, which is extremely dangerous for everyone, including American citizens who become victims of violent criminals, such as the ones we saw earlier. Here's House Speaker Mike Johnson talking about the Biden administration actively preventing the state of Texas from enforcing illegal immigration policy that the government is completely un willing to do. The first job of the government is to protect its citizens. And when Texas has acted to do that, the Biden administration and the president himself have intervened. They've taken them to court. They're cutting their razor wire. They're taking away the measures that the state of Texas has taken out of desperation to protect its own people. I could go on and on and on about all this and the numbers and the actions, the 64 actions that we've documented that President Biden has specifically taken to open that border wide up. Now, of course, the Bible does command Christians to submit to the government, but there are certainly exceptions to this rule, such as when the government not only rewards evil, but also punishes good. We are to submit for the Lord's sake. What do you mean the Lord's sake? When the government is doing what the Lord designed it to do. When government turns the divine design on its head and protects those who do evil and makes those who do good afraid, it forfeits its divine purpose. Just because the government has decided to punish good and moral behavior, for example, protecting the lives of preborn children, does not mean that Christians should stop engaging in this good and moral behavior. In fact, it is actually good and moral for Christians to call out and protest against the government when the government itself has become the purveyor of of evil. In our world today, rulers are designing a culture that protects the immoral. It even has reached the point where it desires to protect criminals and makes those who do good afraid. When the criminals are unrestrained because they don't fear the consequences, but the police are restrained because they fear the consequences of stopping criminals. It seems pretty clear that America is on a downward and destructive trajectory in so many different ways. Of course, we've already talked about the disastrous situation regarding the southern border. Another example is this rapper who has been going viral named Ice Spice who recently released one of the most depraved music videos, yet is being celebrated by an unbelievable number of people. This new uh, Ice Spice song came out just a few days ago. It's already a hit. Music video has nearly 9 million views on YouTube. It's been streamed over 15 million times on Spotify, which is the real test of a song's popularity these days. Overall, Ice Spice, who emerged on the music scene just two years ago or so, has garnered hundreds of millions of streams, hundreds of millions more views on YouTube. She's achieved widespread popularity, especially on TikTok. Uh, she's been featured in songs with Taylor Swift. She's been on the Barbie movie soundtrack. So she is, by every quantifiable measure, a bona fide musical superstar. Ice Spice's recent ultra viral song is called Think You the S Fart with fart in parentheses. And as expected, it's filled with profanity, obscenity, and sexual immorality. Can a country that promotes and celebrates this kind of degeneracy survive for very long? You know, I, I, I tell you one thing, we're in trouble. <laughs> I, 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 I got that. I know that. <laughs> got that. I, I know that. I know that we're in trouble. I know that. Um, there are things happening in the midst of our society that, you know, if you look at R Romans chapter one, or if you look at history, these are the kind of things that happen toward the end and of a mm -hmm. society's um, lifespan, if you will. And uh, I, I think unless things change um, dramatically, that what we're going to see is going to be catastrophic. We also live in a culture where even a radical feminist and someone who is not at all a conservative, J.K. Rowling, has become one of the greatest enemies of the left. However, this teacher's exchange with a student about J.K. Rowling has been going viral, and it gives me at least some hope that it's still possible to make progress reasoning with people. She's, she's had a pretty controversial past. I just want to know, like, what are your thoughts on it? And, like, do you still like her work? despite her uh, bigoted opinions. So first, let's note that the student used the phrase bigoted opinion, implying that he considers J.K. Rowling to have immoral opinions. Now let's watch how the teacher questions the student's assumptions. So let's get specific though. Let's define bigoted opinions. What opinions are bigoted? We're gonna treat this as a thought experiment. I'm not gonna say yeah. what's right or wrong or what way to think. The whole point is to learn how to think, not what to think. Yeah, yeah. So when you say bigot, you, you're, you're starting with the conclusion that given her bigoted opinions, yeah, so first her, uh, let's start with does she have bigoted opinions? So when you, when you say bigoted opinions... She has had a history of being extremely true, like I've heard. 
and you've heard. So, what can you give me an example? The teacher asks the student for a specific example of how J.K. Rowling is supposedly immoral regarding her opinions, which is a great question because there are so many people today who make blanket assumptions without any evidence to back them up. This is exactly what happened between Elon Musk and a BBC reporter who stated that there was a lot of immoral speech on X. I'm asking for one example. Right. And you can't give a single one. And, and, and I'm saying, I'm, I, then I, I say, sir, that you don't know what you're talking about. Really? Yes, because you can't give a single example of hateful con content, not even one tweet. And yet you claimed that the hateful content was high. It's incredibly dishonest to accuse someone of immorality without specific evidence. Yet this seems to have become the norm in our country, especially with the rise of CRT and calling an enormous group of people immoral simply because of the color of their skin and not because of anything specific that they have done. If you look at her Twitter, I think you could see a few things. Um, if you want, I could try and find yeah, see something. If you can find, see if you can find one. So, one of these tweets that she came up with in 2019, she said, Dress however you please, call yourself whatever you like, sleep with any consenting adult who will have you live your best life in peace and security, but force women out of their jobs for starting that, for stating that sex is real. So the student finds a tweet that is a supposed example of J.K. Rowling's immoral opinions. The tweet is about Rowling saying that she is against people being punished for stating that men are men and women are women. Before we continue, I want to ask you, do you see anything wrong with this tweet? So you find that bigoted? What do you find about it was, in there? It was deemed true. Like, like, I myself... Do you find that true yourself? Uh, I don't really have an opinion on it, but I'm just going with what a lot of other people have said. That's pretty amazing. The teacher was able to immediately get the student to admit that he personally did not really find anything problematic with Rowling's tweet, but he was just indirectly agreeing with other people who do have a problem with this tweet. Immediately, we see the teacher beginning to unravel the student's entire foundation and argument. Let's not go with what other people are saying. Let's try and learn how to critically think. So let's analyze the tweet ourselves. So that statement, do you see anything problematic? Disregarding other people's opinions. Um, she he did try and pin some things on a, spe a specific group of per of people. I where does she where does she do that? Do that? Can you read that? But force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real. So the teacher was able to get the student to say what he thought was problematic about the tweet, and the student mentions the statement Rowling made about forcing women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real, which implies that it's immoral and offensive to say that sex is real. Now watch the teacher's impressive response to this. So when I hear that, I'm interpreting that as meaning if a woman says that, you know, saying that there is a difference between men and female and then being attacked as trans, I think that's what she's saying by attacking someone for stating that sex is real. That is exactly what she's saying. Is that I, to you? So, to me, no. Stating that sex is real is not tragic. It's just a fact of life. It exists. So is there anything you disagree with in that tweet? That's an amazing question. The teacher asks if it's immoral to say that sex is real, which is what the student seems to be saying. The student is coming into this conversation with so many assumptions that have absolutely no basis in the real world, and the teacher is masterfully unraveling them one by one. In that tweet, I can't really see anything that I myself disagree with, but I can see why some people would think, oh, this is offensive. We can't have that here or something, because... Do you have... Why do you, do you think it's fair that there's a, that she's being attacked by a large group of people and people are calling her, like you said, at the beginning of this conversation, you said, given the fact that JK Rowling is how do you feel about Harry Potter? Now, yeah. retroactively looking at that statement, do you think that that was the best way to phrase? No, I feel like an idiot now. <laughs> it's okay though, but this is why we do this, to learn, to yeah. learn how to think. That's pretty incredible and encouraging that this teacher was able to get this student to actually change his mind about Rowling's tweet by using simple reason and questions. It should be clear to any rational person that the things Rowling's is saying about this particular issue are perfectly reasonable and not at all hateful. But the problem is that such a large portion of society is being being indoctrinated to think that it's hateful to merely state something factual about biology. Young people in schools today are being taught an insane ideology that is itself extremely narrow-minded and harmful to normal people saying normal things. And not only is all of this insanity happening in America today, we also have a sitting president who is the one who is actively rewarding evil and punishing good, but who is also mentally incapable of providing any real leadership to this country. President Joe Biden recently held a press conference where he demonstrated publicly 
in front of the entire world his utter incompetence to lead. In addition, I know there's some attention paid to some language in the report about my recollection of events. There's even reference that I don't remember when my son died. How in the hell dare he raise that? Frankly, when I was asked the question, I thought to myself, wasn't any of their damn business. Let me tell you something. Some of you have commented, I wear since the day he died, every single day, the rosary he got from Our Lady of Every Memorial Day, we hold a service remembering him, attending by friends and family and the people who loved him. I don't need anyone. I don't need anyone to remind me when he passed away or he passed away. Did you catch that in a press conference that was specifically designed to communicate to the world his mental competence to lead the country? President Joe Biden could not remember where the rosary he wears every single day came from. This was an absolutely disastrous press conference, and it would be humorous if this was not the man leading our country, the most powerful man in the entire world. You know, everything is turned on its head. Our government is the source of lies and the protector of liars and the enemy of those who speak the truth. It praises the evil and persecutes the good. So God's design for government has been entirely corrupted. As these divinely designed spheres of control in human society descend into chaos, the government will cease to function the way God designed it, and in fact, it will become the enemy of the divine design. It will turn everything upside down. It will become the punisher of those who do good. But Christians, no matter how close America is to destruction, no matter how evil our government becomes or how hostile it becomes to the Bible and to our faith, let's remember that we serve a God who is both sovereign and who works out all things for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. History is going exactly according to God's plan. And although we should certainly zealously fight for truth and righteousness in the country we live in, we should never lose fear because we know that God will, in the end, punish all evil and reward all who have repented and put their faith in Jesus Christ, who is the only hope for fallen humanity. The perfect justice will come. And that's what our hope is as believers, that God will make all things right. And God making all things right is different than God making all things like I want them. But they will be made right. We will inhabit a new heaven and a new earth and the new Jerusalem. We will spend eternity in perfect communion with our perfect God. We will experience perfect healing and wholeness, and there will be perfect justice. These things are not in doubt. Hi, my name is Mike. I'm a deacon, a husband, a father, a software engineer, and an amateur maker of videos. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to help me in my mission to spread biblical truth, just subscribe and watch these videos until the end, which will help the YouTube algorithm recommend these videos to more people. I'm committed to using the skills and gifts God has given me to glorify Him and communicate biblical truth, and I would be so grateful if you would come be a part of what I'm building. You can visit my website at joyfulexile.com to learn more about me and what I'm working on. I hope you're having a blessed day. I will see you in the next video, and remember, this world is not our home.